So I was definitely guilty of dismissing this as a ridiculous ploy by the problem child Jake Paul to fight some 60 year old dude. I thought it was all about money. I thought it was all about the Netflix deal and maybe transitioning in there. And the fact that he has like totally put aside his ambitions to be a world champion if you're going to be fighting these type of farcical fights. But it's much more than that. There is some insane rules that I've seen getting blasted all over the internet. And the internet is filled with rumors so we must take that into account. But I thought it was interesting just to bring it up. I want to have a look at the rule set that is in place for Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul live on Netflix. I'm going to talk a little bit about Andrew Tate and what his opinion is of Jake Paul taking on a legend like Mike Tyson. So I guess the first part of this Mike Tyson, Jake Paul rules controversy started yesterday when Derek Chisora had a little conversation and he said something like this. I, I know for a fact they are using... Uh 18 ounce gloves and head guards, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't even believe There's no way they're selling those so, tickets. So, so, so we're watching a sparring match. What are you saying, that that's not a real fight? I don't know, man. You know, I don't know. I, how old is Jake Paul? And I come back again, a guy who's 24, fighting a guy who's 56. I'm like, it's a fucking joke. You think I'll pay and watch that? Only kids will pay to watch that. You know, and parents will give their kids money to go watch that. So Derek Chisora has said that they're fighting in 18 ounce gloves. These big huge like pillow handed gloves as opposed to 10, 12, 14 ounce gloves that normal boxers or people that are on the way up that are fighting cans to pad out their record. These are the type of boxing gloves that these lads use. But um, it's Jake Paul and he is the problem child so it's going to be 18 ounce gloves. So big huge pillow hands on him. That's interesting. They're going to be wearing head guards. So it's pretty much a glorified sparring match. I wonder how much we're going to get charged by Netflix to actually watch this fiasco. And he's pretty spot on the money when he says that children are going to get their parents to buy this fiasco for them. I'm not sure if your average Joe who works the 9 to 5 on the building side or inside in the factory is willing to hand over his hard-earned money to watch Jake Paul pan out a legend like Mike Tyson. I think that's what will happen. We saw footage coming out yesterday of Mike Tyson. Loads of controversy around it. Insane looking footage. People are talking about that just as recent as a few months ago he was walking around with the aid of a cane and that he wasn't capable of holding up his own weight. We know that the lungs probably aren't 100% either if we see the carry on of him over on Joe Rogan promoting that sort of narcotic use to young people that watch them type of podcasts. It's not looking great. Of course you have people putting up videos of him hitting pads and moving really quick and don't get me wrong the guy is extremely tough I would love nothing more for him to step into that ring 18 ounce gloves 14 ounce gloves 10 ounce gloves whatever it is and absolutely bust Jake Paul wide open I would love to see that you know and that would be worth 120 150 200 bucks right you pay if that was a guarantee but unfortunately we have to look at this realistically and the dude is 57 58 and he doesn't look the best in terms of movement and things like that. Saying that, we have seen him turn around his physique in the last couple of years. It goes up and down like a yo-yo. One day he could be kind of overweight and the next day he could be jacked as fuck. So listen, anything is possible. But that's assuming that we actually get to this point where it's actually going to be a fight because at this stage, it's a sparring match. And this is the controversy surrounding the rules. Derek Chisora broke this story. Ariel Hawani, the rat, jumped on it yesterday and started talking shit about it as well. And everyone is claiming that he's the guy who broke the story. Doesn't look like that to me. If there's a story that has been broken has been done over here with Derek Chisora in my opinion. Now we get to the interesting insane beautifulness of the internet. I started coming across these really bizarre TikToks about the rules of this fight. I did a little bit of research, not too much, and I couldn't find some concrete evidence as in a news article or an official set of rules. But there's a lot of people talking about some insane crazy rules. I don't know, like it's probably too wild to even go down the road of talking about it, but we are going to go down the road of talking about it because it's kind of of interesting and kind of fun. Let's have a little look at this. Paul is all set to box against Mike Tyson this July, but the rules in this fight are absolutely absurd. Even at almost 60 years old, Tyson would absolutely dominate Jake Paul, so they had to adjust the rules to make this a somewhat fair fight. First rule is for Paul's own safety. He'll be able to wear headgear like an amateur boxer, but Tyson won't be wearing any of that. That gives Paul a chance to knock Tyson out, but with his headgear, Jake Paul won't get knocked out and won't get badly injured. The second rule I'm just going to pause it there for a second. Can you imagine that this is actually true? That Mike Tyson <laughs> won't be wearing headgear and Jake Paul will. Now, I know it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but it's fun. And let's have a little bit of fun with it, to be honest. Because, I mean, if we think about it in terms of it being reality, that would be crazy, right? That would be crazy if these stipulations were in place in this contract. And it's not beyond the likes of Jake Paul and Logan Paul to alter a deal to favor themselves. Absolutely not. These two boys are vile pieces of shit. 
Second rule is that Jake is allowed to tag team with his brother Logan Paul, but tag team isn't even the correct way of describing it, despite that being what the contract says, because he'll be able to bring Logan in, and they'll both be able to fight at the same time. For the sake Okay, so one of the first videos that I saw, they didn't mention this till the end. They went through all these other like kind of crazy, insane rules that you might think were possible. The headgear, he'll get to the other bits in a minute. But the tag team in bit was the one where I went, nah, nah, man, this is stupid. I can't be right. Listen, we'll bypass it here for the sake of fun and we'll continue. Think of his ego, I think Jake wants to win this by himself. So I don't think he'll be tagging in Logan unless he feels like he needs it. But technically, it could be a 2-1 fight from the opening bell. And the last rule is kind of a two for one. This states that there won't be a weigh-in for Jake. This fight is supposed to be fought at 165, meaning Tyson will need to pass this weigh-in, but Jake Paul won't weigh in, so he could be as heavy as he wants to be. And the second part of this rule is it also won't be drug tested, but again, only for Jake. So if you're keeping track, Jake will be able to fight on any performance enhancing drugs he wants to against Mike Tyson with his brother while not getting punched in the face. And by the way, Mike Tyson is still the favorite in this fight. Okay, so let's break that down slightly, right? Let's put the tag team in bit to the side for a second. There's a stipulation in place that Mike Tyson must weigh in at 165, but Jake Paul can weigh in at whatever he wants to weigh in. That does sound reasonable. That does sound like it's something that might happen. We do hear of these like anomalies in terms of the rule sets, especially given the fact that it's so corrupt over here in the boxing world. Look, that's that's an interesting one right you know there'd be a weight discrepancy and it would all lean towards jake paul even though he's the underdog still with all these rules in place right so we're playing along with that there has to be caveated narcotics tests for um <laughs> for mike tyson but not for jake paul again these are small print details that mightn't come to light within the boxing world so it doesn't surprise me too much that brings us to the headgear for jake paul and not for mike tyson that's not as realistic because it looks a bit stupid and retarded but who knows? Derek Chisora said it. Who knows? So that's kind of interesting. And I suppose then we should also talk about the tag teaming of Logan Paul coming in. <laughs> what is that? Like, there's a bunch of people making TikToks talking about these specific set of rules that apparently are out there. I don't know. They're insane. They're crazy. A tag team match? What is that? <laughs> what is that? I wouldn't put anything beyond Jake Paul and Logan Paul at this point. I thought that was quite funny and interesting to go down that rabbit hole of some crazy rules. But one thing that we do know about the set of rules that are in place and the stipulations that are in place is that, that there is a lot of talk about 18 ounce gloves and headgear. And even that alone is just as insane or maybe not as insane as tag team, but it's quite funny. I want to jump over here and talk about an Andrew Tate clip that I came upon this morning where he was asked, would he fight Mike Tyson? And this was his response. And I thought it was very poignant, especially within the week that we have with Jake Paul announcing this huge superstar fight. And just a little side note to that, I know people probably want to talk about the fact that Tate and his brother have been arrested again. The long arm of the UK law has stretched all the way to Romania with a little bit of despotic behavior and grabbed these two lads again. I don't know what the story is with it. I know that they speak a lot. They enlighten a lot of people again these are the type of things that put you under the cosh in terms of totalitarianism putting that aside let's have a listen to see what andrew tate thinks about fighting mike tyson at the age of 57 58 would you fight mike tyson again no because he's now old and i i would be an absolutely tragic shame to knock out an old version of his prime self that doesn't feel fair you know Mm. Prime Tyson would have ripped me apart in a boxing match. I'm not a boxer, right? Yeah. Perhaps if I was a boxer and I was heavier, maybe I can make up a bunch of stories. But the truth is I'm a kickboxer and it's his rule set and he was Mike Tyson. He would have beaten me. So to beat him when he's past his prime just feels dishonorable. And I'd feel dirty for doing that. So there's no amount of money on the planet that could convince me to fight. Mike Tyson. So I thought that this was very applicable in terms of Jake Paul and the headspace where that dude is at. When we have the likes of Tate saying it how it is, that it would be a tragic shame to go in there and knock out an old Mike Tyson, that it would be dishonorable. And I think that that's a very poignant note to leave this video on because I talked about the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson stuff in the last video and I disparaged it and I don't really have time for it. And I don't want to see people coming in going, bro, you're underestimating Mike Tyson. No, I'm not. That dude would blow most people's heads clean off their shoulders no one's disputing that right he shouldn't have to go in there as a spectacle against a loser like jake paul it, there's something dishonorable about it there's something disgusting about it and it just doesn't sit right with me and i think that a lot of people think that and what tate says here encapsulates that perfectly it's dishonorable it's dirty it's a shame it's disgusting 
and all these adjectives describe Jake Paul perfectly. Let me know what you think down below. Maybe hit like, subscribe and share if any of this made sense. I appreciate you. Cheers.